you're always just like wondering, like, should I do this? Like you have that other voice in your head, you know, telling you you're not good enough or you shouldn't be doing something. And so it was really an exploration of the psyche and, and, you know, those two voices that are in a person's head. There, there's inherent anxiety making any film it's just like it's so hard so it's like yeah when you <laughs> it's insane to make a movie Zoe said in another interview and then like throw a global pandemic on top it's even more insane but I will say like because we were stuck inside for so long there is you know an anxiety ridden nature inherent in that context so you go crazy you go stir crazy sitting inside every day so I think like it was helpful to take the edge off that anxiety to just like distract and like channel it into this story which the character Liza is beset with fear and anxiety about leaving the house and wanting to go to this party and wrestling with those ideas with her younger self and trying to figure out whether she should push through that or not. And so that was very much what we were feeling. Like, should we go do this? Should we walk out onto the streets? Like, is it safe? How, how are we going to pull this off? Are people going to feel okay? And, um, and I feel like that's something that's so relatable to so many people in day-to-day -day life. Like, you're always just like wondering, like, should I do this? Like, you have that other voice in your head, you know, telling you you're not good enough or you shouldn't be doing something. And so it was really an exploration of the psyche and, and, you know, those two voices that are in a person's head. Any scene, I was ready to weep, I, you know, like <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't hard for me to get it for, for either of us to get there. Like that's when we why were, that scene with the both of us was felt so yeah. nice to yeah. do. Scream to stand and, on the and cry. And scream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what, what we needed to be doing. Yeah. I think people want to relate to relatable feelings that they're going through too you know like it's fun to see something that has no relationship to your life whatsoever but underneath every great film is some dynamic or circumstance that you when you when it when it sings and it's amazing like you connect to it on a truth there's a truthful underbelly to mm -hmm. it well Sharon Van Etten is one of uh my favorite musicians and I would say all of our favorite musicians we were just talking about who you would stumble upon on the streets and what would be an exciting dynamic and that was obviously one that that was exciting to us and Sharon when we first were talking to her uh we were like could could you find a um public domain song because we, we have no money um and I I thought it was like too much chutzpah to ask her to to write an original for us, you know, that's like a big ask. Um, and so then she found this song that she, um, was called Till, me, Till We Meet Again. And she sent me via text, just like a demo. And of course, like she was like so self-deprecating was like, this is garbage, but here you can hear what I've tried with it. And I played it and it was like, just the most beautiful thing I'd ever heard. And so that's what we thought we were gonna be singing with her on the street. But the morning of the shoot with her, um, she texted me and said, I decided I wanted to um, write an original. And she wrote that song the morning of our shoot. And we learned it in the car. Kaylee yeah. learned the harmonies in the car <laughs> ride to her. And um, it's a real testament to her genius. And then singing it was, um, yeah, a, such a highlight um, of, my life <laughs> um just like the birds yeah. slipping yeah. on the street it was such a beautiful day the guitar she's like tuning Amazing. the guitar right before we went yeah like, what? it was so we amazing. had her we had her do it so many times like an excessive amount of times really just because it was so beautiful to just keep hearing her sing i was like one yeah. more angle one more yeah angle. yeah yeah <laughs> Is and that just the production sound like her singing on the street what we hear it's yeah amazing. yeah all, all all three of you amazing yeah and then thank you um and then um we ended up using just that demo that she had texted me of telling me again over the biking montage it, was this an extra level of of you know you were afraid of doing comedy but then to be asked to do improv with some of these people we were talking about what was that like yeah you guys really just 
threw a little baby in the deep end. <laughs> yeah. yeah, little uh, burrito had to learn to swim. Yeah. Uh, little burrito? We call her, we call her little burrito because she's, she's every day that I powered up, by burritos. Every day I showed up the set. You guys were like, do you eat breakfast? Yeah. What'd you like, eat? I have my burrito. A breakfast burrito? <laughs> yeah, we didn't have like blame me? any craft services. So if you open Kaylee up, she would be filled with nothing other than pasta and breakfast burritos. <laughs> I live a good life. Yeah, she does. Uh yeah, it was terrifying, but everyone was so kind and Fred was so sweet. He was like, good job. At the yeah. end of the day, he felt so good. But you know. I grew up watching him on SNL every, every Saturday I was watching him. So to be, I mean, it wasn't exactly in front of him. He was beneath him, was yeah. beneath him which felt right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it was but it was like, um, it, it was sort of a perfect way to uh, be improvising with such, you know, intimidating presences in the improv world because everyone was scared. Yeah. Because it was everyone's first time on camera since lockdown. So I think all of those people were like, can I do this? Am I going to be funny? You know? And so we were all in the same boat, regardless of experience. We could have gone with just full belly laughs the whole time because we have so many funny bits and runs. Mm -hmm. But in the writing process and in the way that we design it, we always are making sure that there's a soul and a heart that's anchoring the story and the characters and having that kind of carry you through the journey. Because uh, if you don't have that anchor, it's like you're kind of just adrift. And when it's all frosting, you know, it's like the sugar just takes you to a crazy place. And I don't know that you, you need the cake to have, you know, mm -hmm. be with the frosting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Somebody write that quote down. That's good. That's her wine. We conceived of it and we're like, let's just go make this thing. And we, you know, so many of the actors in the film are friends or people that we've worked with. So it was easy to like interface with them together. And because I was behind the camera, uh, was Daryl also, he was a cinematographer and was operating camera. So it, it, I think, it, yeah, we it, were both wearing so many hats that it was really helpful. To yeah. Him. Like when, when, when Zoe's acting in the scenes, there's certain things that I can see that she can't see. And then vice versa, when I'm DPing as well as like trying to make sure everything is in focus. He was and, pulling his own focus and, also. <laughs> and, you know, and arranging the shots and, and such, uh, sometimes you can't be as intimate with the actors and, and the story because sometimes it literally, I'm just geographically far away from where they even are. Um, so it was a very nice, uh, harmonious relationship. Team. Having worked with Kelly on two very different films, like, and we were all talking about this the other night. Kelly yeah. is a big preparer um, and, I think this was such a cool experience because you couldn't prepare for many scenes. I like a lot of control and yeah. whenever, I, whenever I have the opportunity to, you know, do all of the prep work and this, I had zero, Yeah, you know, being thrown to so many different experiences, you know, the, not knowing what the lines are going to be, also being in a comedy. It was just it, 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 it is an experience that I'll always take with every single project that I do, yeah. you know, because it was another side of me that now I can watch and be like, oh, that that, yeah. that play is so fun, you know, and, yeah. and how to incorporate it in the next things that I do. I think that most productions have an excessive amount of people that aren't necessary in some ways. Like, I, I just think there's so much standing around and like, it, it. it's not that they're not all useful. I mean, I'm not trying to take away from like the value of crew members, but it, it is more cumbersome when you have that many bodies and like that much heavy lifting because it's just like that's much, much more people to wrangle and to have to do things and then to like have a bureaucracy around mm -hmm. so it's like you might think that like every single person has to have their one individual task down to the pa down to the office coordinator but like when push comes to shove you kind of when you cut the fat away like you realize you don't really need that. Like, and this is a perfect testament. And it, and I'll just evangel I'll be an evangelist of this style for a moment, just because we move so quickly. We could come up with stuff on the on the fly. And so, like the idea of a skeleton unit um, crew, 
it, it just made it so fun and um, and being that nimble, you know, it just allows an intimacy for the actors as well to be able to feel so free mm -hmm. and like, right? Like mm -hmm. you just don't feel, when there's so many lights and people standing there looking at you and waiting and like, there's just <laughs> such an intense thing. And this was just like, there's just nobody. I mean, it's just, so it's just, you feel like this freedom.